Ladies and gentlemen, we're here on the Deschutes River with uh, Guide Vale from Riverborne Outfitters. And Vale, uh, we're here in June. What do you expect out of today? Well, you know, we're at the uh, tail end of the salmon fly hatch here. So we're in getting close to late June. So hopefully we'll get into some dry fly fishing. Um, there have been some dry fly opportunities on the big bugs on salmon fly and golden stone patterns. Uh, but, uh, you know, to start things out, we'll probably do some nymphing um, and uh, go from there. Sounds great. Well, we're looking forward to it. All right. All right, let's try it. Soon we were drifting down the Deschutes River and Vale was determined to get us into some wild rainbows. Well, you know, we're uh, here June 18th. Um, we're on the uh, tail end of the sand fly hatch here, about five miles below uh, Pelton Dam. And there's obviously some sand flies and some stone flies around, uh, golden stones. Um, but we're basically in the, the tail end of that and uh, in between hatches for the most part. You know, the Deschutes River is, uh, you know, really well known for the sand fly hatch. Uh, you know, sand flies and golden stone flies. When does that usually start? Um, you know, middle of May, uh, with the peak, uh, you know, around Memorial, usually the week before or for Memorial. And, um, you know, July and August, early August, peach of the cat is fishing for the most part. Uh, you know, real hot days really gets the hatch going, uh, border on a, a blizzard at times. There's some, some caddis around. Um, we're seeing a little activity on the surface. So. You're not allowed to fish from a boat where we're on this section, is that correct? Correct, the whole the whole lower to shoots, there's no angling from a, a, a boat or any kind of floating device. It's a 100 mile uh, river and we're probably in river mile 95 here. Um, this is a, um, you know, a really good uh, nymph and spot. Okay. Um, Bit of a seam here, and it drops off. There's a little deep spot below us here. We're going to start fishing right about here and work down through this uh, this lower section. And the technique I like to employ here, I call long line nymphing or power nymphing. Okay. And one of the rules is don't false cast your nymph setup because you got an indicator, two split, two flies. A lot of mess. We got wind. So yeah, false casting is going to get you in a lot of trouble. Okay. So what you want to start with is. Uh, 20 feet of line or so out below you on the dangle. Lift that rod up, get a majority of the line off the water. And you want to start the cast with a, a slow load and then put the power on once the rod hits vertical. So nice slow load right over the top. So one thing that's nice about this spot is we don't need to go way out either. Steve mended his line and battled the wind. Wow. It's all right. Soon his efforts would be rewarded. Lift up. Nice fish. Yep, there we go. Oh, climb around. Climb around. The fish made a powerful run and started pulling Steve's line from the reel. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> that was close. Man, that's a pretty nice weighty fish right there. Yeah, yeah, well, you gotta survive this first run yeah. here and then. <laughs> Changing the direction of the pole will confuse the fish. Okay. Get him to come back to us here. Oh, it looks like he's popped off. Oh yeah. Shoot. Oh well. Darn it. That was a nice fish. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have a bit of current to work with in, in this river, so. Yeah. You're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some though. Okay, well we're gonna head up here and fish this flat up here. Uh, it's a nice nymph and run. Um, it also has, uh, dry fly possibilities um, depending on the time of year. Rise. Yeah, we might want to sit back here for a second and see if we see anything popping on here. Is that a PMB oh, coming down? Little That's... fish coming off right there. There's, obviously there's a lot of cows starting to uh, yeah. to show here. You know. you know, with this wind, you know, we have a little bit of uh, um, some little cover, yeah, a little pop right there. And there's that fish. We'll see if they'll look. Caddis. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if Ooh, there's another yeah. one. So, you know, maybe just come right down here. You know, keep your back cast out over there. Start short, you know, obviously you don't want to line that fish that's right there. Steve fired his dry fly into the wind. There's oh, a better yeah. fish. Nice, that's a nice fish. All right, Sweet. good for you. 
Oh, yes. Oh, that was <laughs> No, he didn't come off. Okay. He just came out. Good for you. Well, why, don't we, uh, why don't we come into the river here? Okay. <clears throat> okay well, yeah, we'll turn the rod up to the uh, bank there, try to turn them up. You know, we're always trying to get the uh, fish's head up top. All right. Very nice. Good for you. One of the benefits of coming out here on a, you know, a little yeah. more inclement day is you're not going to have the pressure and the crowds to deal with. Exactly. If we're staying at home. Oh, beauty. We're tough. That's right. Whatever. That's right. Oh, man, that's a nice fish. Woo, there he goes. You had him close. Yeah. Oh, nice bright fish. Maybe back that line back out yeah. there. There you go. Right about there. Here, there. Now keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. All right. There you go. Good for you. Beauty, Steve. Good. On the dry. Nice. See, the tell no lies net says he's 11. He's almost an 18 inch fish. He's a little bit thin there. He's... Wow. Nice. Good job. Woo. Thank you. That was awesome. Congratulations. That was awesome. Yeah, he actually cool. came out from inside. Yeah, he was in there pretty close. Yeah, he was. Probably tucked in, yeah. into that grass. And he, yeah. That was cool to see him come up for that. Yeah, well, that's what people come here for, you know, uh, for the sand fly hatch and during the caddis uh, hatch. You know, we can get some great dry fly fishing. So it's what the, you know, the river's known for. Well, I better give Latin a turn this time. Well, so much for the catching. <laughs> yeah, it means I gotta teach this guy too. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> You're in trouble now. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, we saw these fish rising, a lot of insect activity, and got the nice stone fly right in there. And uh, boy, that fish came right out from the side. Could see it take it. It was awesome. All right. All right, lad, you ready? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I love love casting dry flies into 30 mile an hour winds. Yeah. But I'll try it. Steve well, did you it. You saw what Steve did here. He snuck up behind this tree. Yeah. There's uh, I've switched bugs up. I've put a little uh, X caddis on. So uh -huh. uh, there's still a couple fish working in here. They might not be that size of a fish, but hey, we'll uh, we'll see if we'll let you work the kinks out on these guys, and then we'll go for the bigger ones. Sounds great. Okay, here you go. Thanks. There we go. Oh, nice. Woo! <laughs> that was fun. Do I, I don't have a fish on though. Yeah. That was fun. So you know in the, in the movie, the river runs through it. Yeah. The Brad Brad Pitt's character sitting there talking in, in, in his old age, and he's tying that knot. Yeah. It's the turtle knot he's tying. Oh really? Uh -huh. Wow. Is that? Yep. <laughs> Wonder if it liked that up motion. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's good. Stay off the middle of the river here. It's a nice fish. I can't tell what it is, but yeah. good, good fighter. Definitely a good fighter. Yeah, do a little something. There we go. Yeah. Fast, strong, powerful. Oh! Oh! Did that put too much pressure on him? You're gonna win some. You're gonna lose some. <laughs> yeah. Didn't break off that time. Huh? Didn't break off. Yeah. When guiding, I like to do the pull test. And <laughs> <laughs> right. See. <laughs> yeah. I've lost my share of fish for clients though doing that. Unfortunately, I mean, it is fishing, and we're down yep. to four X here. Um, but we're getting some action at least. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Really good. And that's just a couple casts in a row there hooking yeah. up on fish. So really good. The tip of the week is brought to you by Northwest Outfitters, located at the village at Riverstone in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. The other tip that I have for Rowan is the planning a little bit in advance you know, picking your lines and making sure that you know what you're gonna do long before you get there. There, ooh, whack. And there is a difference between 
just rowing and getting you down the river safely and rowing and ensuring that your fishermen both in front and in this case we don't have anybody here today but in back that both of them have a shot at fish you know we laugh all the time but i think it's the coolest video game you could ever play and i really think that mike's going to get a fish off this left seam before we suck in there can't oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I was just saying, I can't see your bug. Yeah. Oh! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, good fish! Good fish. Oh. <laughs> Do it again! <laughs> that was awesome. They pound that thing. Oh, yeah! Dude, that's a big fish. <laughs> oh, he just rolled on it so beautifully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike the beard. That's a, is that a big bow or a big cutty? <laughs> he just rolled on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're coming in for a landing here. Yeah. So you get a big fish in a big river like this, it's a good idea to tuck in here where the the water's a little slower. Give your angler a chance to actually land this thing and get it into the net. Oh yeah. Nice, bro. Good fish, Mike. Good fish. Good. I'm gonna race down here real quick, Ladin. Nice. And, and a scoop in a bag. <laughs> now that is a cutthroat. So, you know, one, one thing that's nice about fishing with nets is, is you can actually revive a fish much, much better in the net. A lot of people just catch these things and let them go. And with the water temperatures that we have today, we're okay, but that's the sole factor in, in how long you can handle a fish. You know, obviously you want to get them going on their way, but notice that this fish is just resting in the net. Mike has him pointed upstream where he's getting good oxygen and good flow over his gills. Um, and uh, he's upright, he's got his equilibrium back, and he's rested from his battle, so it's time to put him back. But a net can allow you to do that. Oh yeah, he's ready. He's spunky. Good job. Nice cutthroat. Good work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, big one. Yeah. Another one coming? Yep. Well, we shall just introduce him to the purple churb. <laughs> we call it the disco churb sometimes, but purple? I don't know. Let's give it, let's give it a shot. I don't ask questions. Just do it. Darn it! Gone! Gone! <laughs> Big old fish is gone. Yes! That's what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah the fish veil had on just skyrocketed out of the water. It was so exciting and then all of a sudden, bah! It was gone. All right, Steve, well this spot here, we're gonna go fish around this dead tree. Okay. Yeah, and there's a bunch of boulders you can see upstream of that tree. Uh, so we're gonna sneak around downstream and then uh, you're gonna put some casts upstream and usually there's some fish holding on in those boulders so uh, okay. let's see if we can uh, find a few. Sounds good. Steve and Vale worked their way toward the bank and Steve waded against the strong current. Ooh! Wow! Big fish! Oh 
Bye. Might have been what we were looking for, right? Bail hurried to assist Steve. <laughs> that was my last cast. <laughs> Famous last cast. Watch that line there. You got that. Get to the end. Yeah. Let's try to get that head up if we can. Okay. Let him dig down in there. Wow. Oh, that was a nice take. That was a nice take on that fish. Trying to get this, get this fish up here. Wow. I'm try not to let him go down yeah. there. Ooh, it's huge. I can see it. Yep. It's huge. <laughs> nice fish. Nice fish. All right. Oh, my. Keep that head up. Keep that head up. Oh. oh. Did he go? Oh. Gosh. Just slid right off the side, and then he popped it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darn it. That was a nice fish. Boy, I finally got a tough cast in there against the wind and hooked that fish. Got it all the way to the net. Unfortunately, it got off right at the net, but it was a big fish. Jeez. You know, you can see it's kind of an interesting spot here because it's it really deep. It's not your classic salmon fly spot by any means, but... Uh, um, well, it probably takes a big bug to get them up out of this It spot. does. That's why the salmon fly hatch um, and uh, the salmon fly are such an important food source to these guys. Yeah. Wow. Look at that thing. Can I see that? Yeah, let's do it. Look at the size of that thing. Fortunately, they don't bite, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it's no wonder those yeah. fish go after those things. All right. <laughs> it's cool. So, Vale, how long have you been guiding on the Deschutes? Uh, this is my sixth season guiding on the Deschutes. Great. Worked for a local fly shop in Bend for a couple years, and this is my fourth season open, owning my own business. Okay, and again, it's uh, Riverborn Outfitters? Riverborn Outfitters, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're out of Bend. We offer uh, day and multi-day drift boat trips on the uh, Deschutes and walk and wade trips on the Crooked River. Great, and, and mostly red band rainbows, but you also guide for steelhead, right? Yeah, we have, uh, the Deschutes has one of the uh, best runs of summer run steelhead in the lower 48. We start fishing for them down low in August, and they get up in this stretch in mid-September, mid-September through November is when we're doing our day and multi-day stuff up here. The sweet spot, when we hit that sweet spot, yeah, those flies get down and the drift works really well. That's about it right there. Oh, yeah. oh shoot! Oh, keep lifting up. Keep lifting up. Oh, you think I might have it? I do have it. Jeez! Oh, it's big. Okay. Wow, it's big. I thought it was gone. Yeah, the fish I caught, I had it on, and then all of a sudden I thought I lost it. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm done here. And then Vale said, reel in, reel in, you might still have it. And sure enough, it was still on there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hold it right there. Is he ready? Oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh. Well, let's let's not tell the guide that the uh, fly rod's caught in the tree until <laughs> after he releases it. <laughs> I'll do it this way. Beautiful. Thank you, like sir. You know, I had that happen before. That yeah. was fun. <laughs> Oh, great. Good job. So yep. one of the things is, yeah, when that bobber goes down or that indicator goes down, yeah. definitely set the hook and keep it up until you find out what it is. Yeah. You so know? so that little 10-second delay where I thought there was a fish on is not really recommended? No, no. Yeah, <laughs> you know, lifting your rod and then setting it back down is not good, uh, hook set. Oh, you know? boy. Well, that's, that's good. Right. I, yeah. Sometimes I do things wrong just to teach the audience yeah, the wrong good. things to do so they can correct that's all right. them and do yeah. that. Well, Bill, thank you so much. It's a fantastic trip. Had a yeah. great time and sure my appreciate pleasure. it. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. I'm glad to have uh, been able to show you guys the river and have you out here. Uh, I think we uh, gave it heck and gave it our all and 
we did see a few nice fish and uh, yep. absolutely there's more out there for you guys so uh, <laughs> come back and we'll uh, we'll go find them next time let's do it all definitely right, all right thanks be sure to join us next time for more fishing with lad because we're having fun catching fish <laughs>